Good morning, welcome back to my channel. <clears throat> my name is Allie and today is day 10 of the September series where I upload a video every single day. I am about to hop onto live reading sprints and I'm so nervous. It's weird because if I am joining someone on their sprints, not nervous at all. I'm like excited, I'm ready to have fun. This is the second time I will be hosting sprints terrified. Last time it was during the September season. I have privated that video because it is embarrassing. <laughs> this time, luckily, I have a friend joining me, Brittany, so it should be a little less awkward, but I'm sure I'll make it awkward. We'll see. I do think I am going to get further along into House of Sky and Breath while I do these sprints, so we'll see how that goes, and then I don't know what we're doing today. We might go to Barnes & Noble. If we don't, I'm so sorry I teased you. <sighs> it's not even totally light outside because it is six 45 a.m. on a Saturday. All right, I better make my coffee and make sure I don't have anything in my teeth. I have like seven zits on my face this morning because of course. I'm just a ball of sunshine, aren't I? Okay, goodbye. Hi. Are we live? <laughs> You're live. <laughs> um, hello, anyone who's there. I don't know if anyone is, but I'm joined by the lovely Brittany. There is no one watching, so it's just us. <laughs> All right, we just finished. I don't know why. It is so nerve wracking doing those live sprints, but I feel like I did so much better this time. I feel like I nervous babbled nonstop, don't get me wrong, but thank God Brittany was there. Brittany, you're awesome. You're my MVP. Thank you for being awesome. But yes, I do believe we are going to Barnes and Noble today. I might go ham because I got paid on Friday. As for House of Sky and Breath, I read about a hundred pages, which is really sad because we streamed for four and a half hours. Anyway, I wasn't really enjoying myself at first. If you watch my wrap up, I did talk a little bit about the first half of this book that I finished and how I wasn't really vibing with how many characters' point of views we were getting because we were just getting tiny little portions of everyone's point of views. And it wasn't really flowing in a way that was really fun for me. I feel like I get a lot more out of a book if it's a third person so you already get everyone's story or one or two people's point of views. So I have been struggling with that a little bit, but then this scene just happened and I actually really liked it. And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot. That's why I like this book. It was a scene involving some weird way of not telling the future, but telling the present. It just sounded very witchy and very cool. And then we got a little hint into some of the, not layers, but I guess for lack of a better word, the layers of hell. This is a fantasy by the way. And there are so many different types of creatures in this book, but also so many different like worlds and places and almost dimensions, like there's a hell. Hold on, someone's walking past my window. And there are different gods in each of the layers of hell. Um, one of them is almost a favorite character of mine, even though we haven't really seen too much of him. And I'm just so curious about that aspect of the book. And I kind of want a whole book that's just in the hells. It's probably why I really like Hellbent. But yeah, ooh, I feel like my voice is tired from talking. But thank you so much to anyone who participated in the live sprints. Thank you for putting up with my babbling ass self. I think I will keep those up. I don't think there's anything absurdly embarrassing or cringy that I, uh, I'm speaking too soon. I haven't watched it back. I know I'm sounding like a pick me girl right now, but I'm a little weird in my head. Like when I, oh my God, I sound like Jughead from <laughs> Riverdale. I'm weird, okay? I'm a weirdo. You can go now. But I'll probably keep those up if you do want to check out the portions of the video where we were chatting with everyone. We talked a little bit about Allie Hazelwood, a little bit about how to get physical arcs there at the end. Brittany was telling me that you can just email publishers and be like, hey, can I have this book? And sometimes they'll just send it to you, uh, which is just mind blowing. Even though the worst thing that they can say is no, it's still terrifying to think about doing that. I don't know why. Maybe I'll do that this month. That would be really fun. Okay, I'm feeling nervous still. I have that nervous energy, so I need to like go run around the block or something. <laughs> Y'all, I decided to just bite the bullet and go ahead and email one of the publishers. I was thinking about asking for like an anticipated release of an author whose work I previously loved. I was thinking I'd ask for the sequel for Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. This is my favorite book of the year so far. I know her second book is coming out in January and it's published by Del Rey Books, who I think is an imprint of Penguin Random House. I went to their site and they have an email. They said, do you want to request a specific title? Send us an email. And if they have copies and you fit their criteria, which I don't know that I do, they'll send it. I would show you this email I'm crafting, but it does have my address in it. So that's not happening. Basically, I just said, hi, my name's Allie. I have a booktube channel called All I Do Is Read. Earlier this year, I reviewed and adored Emily Wiles' Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett and it's my favorite book of the year. 
You know, what's crazy though is that that's not a lie. I hope they believe me. I was wondering if you had any extra physical review copies of the sequel, Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lands. I would be eternally grateful. And then I put a link to the video in case they want to call my bluff. Oh, I'm so nervous. This is probably going to end up in someone's spam because I used emojis in the email subject line, but whatever. Okay, I'm going to press send. Five. Let me read it one more time. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> It is September 9th. That'd be awesome if I got like a reply this month and then I could tell you about it. Now, I didn't tell them this, but I already have the net galley for it, which does feel a little greedy. Yes, but I really want the physical copy because I feel like I read better that way. And I think it works for people in videos if there's a physical copy better. So at least if they don't reply to me or they say no, like I still have the arc. I feel very greedy right now, but I don't care that much. Actually, I do a little bit, but don't judge me. <laughs> Hi, it's a little while later. I ended up coming home and taking a big old nap. I don't know what it is about going out of my house and being around other people, but man, does it take it out of me. Anyway, I probably am just going to read a little bit more tonight, but I wanted to show you the books that I got today. It was weird, I got to Barnes and Noble and I was walking around and I couldn't find anything that was inspiring me. And it's so funny because I feel like I could order books every single day and you know what? This week I have been. But then when I walk into a bookstore, I'm like, do I like any of these books? I think next time I plan on going to a bookstore, I need to come up with a list of books to get. But then just as I was about to walk out, I saw some books. I ended up getting six and three of them, I already have the Net Galley arc of, which is just, I don't know how to feel about that, but at least I am pretty sure I'm gonna love them. First, I got Menstrilio by Gerardo Simano Gardola. It's got this creepy little demon on the cover. I think this is the Literally Dead book club for September. This sounds so creepy. This lady named Magos has a son that dies, which is very sad, and she carves out a piece of his lung to save for herself, and she nurtures it, and it becomes sentient, and it grows into this little demon named Monstrilio. Eventually, Monstrilio begins to resemble Santiago because his parents are just lovely people, it sounds like. But despite the family's best efforts to turn the monster they created into a man, Monstrilio's innate impulse threatens to destroy his fragile second chance at life. <gasps> oh, I feel like this is gonna be horribly sad. I feel like I'm gonna start to love Monstrilio and something bad is gonna happen. <sighs> I also got Chlorine by Jade Song. This is a five-star prediction. I do have the net galley of this. I don't know why I haven't read it yet. It's one of those situations where I think I'm gonna love it so much that I'm putting it off because I'm scared of the pressure that I put on this book. The blurb is exactly why I think I'm gonna love it. It is both a literary coming-of-age narrative, which is one of my favorite things, and a dark, unsettling horror tale. It's about a young woman named Ren, and she's a swimmer. She's so obsessed with it, and she wants to become a mermaid. She will do anything she she can to make a life for herself where she can be free. No matter the pain, no matter what anyone else thinks, no matter how much blood she has to spill. I, oh, I gotta read this this month because I'm itching for another five star. I did pick up Silver Nitrate by Silvia Marina Gostia. I am a little nervous about this and I don't know why. I think it's because I still haven't read one of her books yet and the synopsis is just vague enough to make me wonder if this is gonna be my thing. It's kind of about a few characters that are making a cult classic movie. Not cult classic, a cult horror. The magic film was never finished and the director thinks his life is cursed because he never finished this movie. So a bunch of the characters, including our main character, decide to help him finish it, but then they start noticing weird stuff happening around the set and in their lives. That's all it really tells us. The film itself is like a Nazi movie, 
which makes me feel a little uncomfortable, but obviously it's supposed to. So yeah, I was looking for a couple of very popular mystery thrillers because I saw this girl raving about them on TikTok, which is like, it was like a random girl. So I don't know why I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna love these too, because I did not know this bitch from Eve. Most of the books she was talking about, I actually couldn't find at Barnes & Noble, which is weird because I've seen their covers a million times. The only one I could find was Local Woman Missing by Mary Kabika. I've seen this cover, I don't, know what it's about. It was sort of an impulse buy. So if I don't like it, it's my own damn fault. Okay, it's about a bunch of kids that end up going missing and 11 years later, one of the kids returns. Everyone wants to know what happened to her, but no one is prepared for what they'll find and some people will stop at nothing to keep the truth buried. It's vague, which actually excites me because that means there's probably so many plot twists in here that they couldn't even put more than a couple sentences on the back cover. And then the last two things I got, I do have neck alley arcs of. At the End of Every Day by Ariana Arish. This is the one that says it's for fans of Julia Armfield, Anne Reed, Jeff Vandermeer. It's about a woman who works at a, I think it's an amusement park in California. And she is so devoted and at one with this amusement park that I feel like it's a little speculative. I think there's some something weird going on here. And it talks about how I think a famous person gets hurt at the park and they decide to shut it down and our main character does not handle it well. But also workers start to go missing at the park. What happens when the park empties out? And what happens when Delphi, our main character, who seems remarkably at one with it is finally forced to leave. It's a novel simultaneously about the uncanny valley, death cults, optical illusions, and the enduring power of fantasy. <gasps> I'm so excited for this one. I gotta start this one this month too. I'm, I'm just gonna keep saying that and I'm probably not gonna start any of these. I wanna get him back on and make him really jealous, wanna make him feel bad. And then I got The God of Endings, which yes, I have the neck alley too. Why am I buying books that I already have free versions of? Couldn't tell you. There's just something about a physical copy of a book. I've heard pretty good things about this. For some reason, I thought it was gonna be like 600 pages long. I guess it's almost 500 pages, so that's not that much of a difference. I'm pretty sure this is about an immortal woman, and I'm pretty sure she's a vampire. Yes, she has a mysterious growing hunger for blood. Kayla from Books and Lala, I think, read this, and pretty sure that she said that if you read the, what is it? The Secret Life of Abby LaRue? Whatever, you know this book I'm talking about. If you read that book and you wanted more scenes of her in the past, that's gonna be more like this, which gives me pause because I didn't really love Addie LaRue. I give it a three star, but one of the things I was most excited for was seeing this woman back in time. It does say it's very suspenseful, which is not the vibe I thought it was at all when I got the neck alley. I thought it was going to be a very moody, slow literary book. And that's it. Oh, I kind of want to start all of these right now. I am so annoying because I will buy a book, immediately want to start it, but instead will buy another book, then I immediately want to start that one, and so on and so forth until I have this. I suppose that's just consumerism and I'm a victim. Wow. Y'all, I'm gonna call it a night. We ate some dinner. We watched some Lost. I edited my video. All in all, what a day. I got six new books. I love to see it. And I got another live show under my belt. Again, thank you so much to Brittany <laughs> and for everyone who joined. Let me go over my stats for today before I go though. So far this month, I've read six books. Today, I read 100 pages exactly. So in total for the September series, aka the month of September, I have read 1,900 and 52 pages. I'm trying to think of what I'm gonna read tomorrow. I don't think I'll be continuing Crescent City, House of Sky and Breath. Actually, maybe I will. I don't know. I'll have to sleep on it, but I will see you tomorrow, so you'll find out. Goodbye.